Hi, welcome to Teardown. So I've never seen inside of a stick welder before, and I'm pretty sure I know how it works, but yeah, no, it's, it's like they say, don't turn it on, take it apart. I suspect this uh, dial here is lying to me. It says duty cycle, and indeed it has 100%, 30%, 20%. I don't think that's possible, and again, I could be wrong, and if I am wrong, that would be cool because I'll get to see something I've never seen before. I believe, um, of course, duty cycle is pulse width modulation. So that's a square wave, and that's, you know, at whatever frequency, 30% of the time it's on, 70% of the time it's off. But I think you have to have a computer in order to have pulse width modulation because that's what, that's what a duty cycle would be. So, if this has some sort of pulse width modulation without a computer, because this is an old machine, that would be very interesting to see. I suspect this is a variac. And so this is a variable transformer. The primary has a constant number of windings. The secondary has a variable number of windings. One side, say, you know, the hot is, a, is just a singular winding, but then the, you know, the neutral or whatever, because, you know, this is AC, is determined by a brush. There are windings that have no insulating coating on them, and by moving this lever, you move that brush across those windings, and you choose which secondary winding uh, you're gonna you're gonna use as your other end, and so between those two points, you change the length, you change the number of uh, turns, uh, the number of turns of wire. You choose the number of windings in the secondary, so it's a variable transformer. So it's a variac. I think that's what this is. This is just a lock nut, and you loosen the lock nut, and you can move that arm there. You have uh, your work, and then you have your electrode. You have low and high, which I assume is just. Uh, again, something simple with a transformer. I would assume you're dividing by two or something like that. So anyway, let's see what's inside. Okay, so this is 48 amps at 240 volts. And then of course we have our just our standard uh, shaded pole motor here. And this is just turned on when you turn on the switch. This is our transformer. Now this is very interesting. This is our lock nut. And this has a cable that goes right through the middle of the transformer. And this is not a variac. This is not a variable transformer. Uh, when I turn, or excuse me, when I slide this knob, if it will allow me, what I'm doing is I'm moving these two rods um, through the transformer. Mm -hmm. So this, I've seen this before. Now, I can't remember what this is called, um, but what I'm doing, I believe, is I'm actually changing the inductance of the transformer with this ferric or or some sort of you know material that is capable of having a, a magnetic flux uh, pass through it with low resistance um, and I think this is variable in its inductance ah yes it is look at this might not quite be able to see this this right here is a stack of just iron, same as the transformer. This transformer is made up of stacked iron plates, and right there, that is just plastic. So what I'm doing is when I slide this in, I'm sliding in, I'm, I'm putting more metal in there, and then when I slide it out, I'm taking out metal, and I'm replacing it with plastic, which changes the inductance of this system, which, um, changes the amount of current. This is a current limiter, I believe. Um, it acts as a type of ballast. So as I, I think, before, I'm going to test this, but I think when I increase the inductance, it um, decreases the current. So I think when the iron is all the way in, that's the lowest current. Let's find out if I'm right. Okay, so we want low current, and we're going to slide this rod to the left, and indeed, you see, as I slide that to the left, those rods go further in. I want more, more, excuse me, more current. I reduce the inductance, which of course, this is stuck. This needs some oil or something. What did I, I want to, I want to increase the current. I slide this over, and then these rods here should slide out. Yeah, you decrease the inductance, you replace the iron with plastic, and the lower inductance will allow more current to flow. Hmm, yes. I believe what this does is this creates a ceiling. So, say for example, I set this at 
you know, right here, uh, 130 on top, 110 on the bottom, so let's say 130 on the high side. If I dead short the work uh, and the high side here, and I just connect these together, I should get a maximum of 130 amps or so, I believe, because, uh, of course, there's no resistance between these here, these, um, uh, the, those uh, electrodes, the resistance is actually all right here in this inductance. And so you think of it as an electric motor. You know, this electric motor, this is of course a shaded pole motor, but the same applies with uh, any electric motor, so that would include this here. So this, this is one coil. This is only a primary, there is no secondary. So I, when I hook this fan up, what I'm doing is I'm just, you know, dead shorting, 240 across that coil, dead short, and then this fan spins. So why doesn't that, you know, if I, if I just hooked up, if I unspooled that coil of wire and I, I, I strung it out into a, a single continuous line and I hooked it up across 240, of course, it'd be like a light bulb. It would light up and whoosh and it would, it would melt and it would oxidize and it would be gone in an instant. But for some reason, when I hook, 240 across that same wire in this configuration, it'll draw a very small amperage and it will never melt, it'll never run away, and then this little fan turns. So what that is, what stops this wire from just turning into a light bulb, you know, like a light bulb filament and just burning and melting, uh, is actually the inductance. So the inductance of this fan is the resistance, and the inductance of this fan should be uh, so high that it limits the current, and so this thing uses maybe, you know, 20 watts or something like that. And so whether this fan blade is here or not, whether the rotor is there or not, it should draw about, you know, 20 watts. And then that inductance here of this iron, I believe, is what actually uh, limits that current. So you're doing the same thing with this transformer. I can dead short um, these electrodes, and this transformer is effectively uh, kind of like this motor. You only have a primary, and there is no secondary. So the amount of current that this transformer draws, uh, uses, when it is, when the secondary is in a dead short condition, is based on the inductance of this transformer. And you can change the inductance of this transformer with these um, ferric um, iron rods. And so when you increase the inductance, that increases the resistance. So whether the secondary is shorted or not, this transformer now has a ceiling. So when it's set here, the absolute maximum current it will ever be able to deliver is 130 amps, and that's it. It'll, it'll draw a lower current just sitting here. It won't, it won't use all that current on the primary, uh, but the more current you use on the secondary, the more current the primary uses up to that 130 amp mark. I think it's called a shunt. I think this is, this physical piece of metal is called a shunt, if I remember correctly. Uh, the output voltage is constant, uh, but the current is limited. And I, I, once you hit that current ceiling, I think the voltage drops off. But the voltage should be constant, I think. It'll always be 25 volts up until that 130. And then, of course, if there's, there's no resistance um, across the output, there is no potential, you know. You have to have a differential in order to have a voltage potential. So if I just dead shorted that, uh, there would be no there would be no differential because there's it is fully conductive between those two points. So it wouldn't be 25 volts. At that point, it would be basically zero volts and 130 amps. And I got my appropriately antique uh, oil can, and this is filled with used gear oil. Uh, my great-grandfather always used to do that, and he still does. He's still alive. He's 82, and he still oils things with used oil. It's, it's, I, I enjoy him because it is very amusing the extent to which he is cheap. He used to be a professor at Northern Arizona University, and he was so cheap he wouldn't wash his socks. He would hang his dirty socks up on the clothesline and uh, let it rain for a few days and then let them dry and then he would wear those socks to teach at NAU. Ah, well, I'm an idiot. This motor has two holes for uh, oiling. So you actually put oil into the hole and it'll drizzle down onto the shaft. That's very unusual. I've never seen that before on a shaded pole motor specifically. 
Uh, normally these are non-directional, so you know gravity doesn't apply for oiling holes. And also shaded pull motors are, are just cheap and you know mass produced and they're worthless and it's not expected that this will be serviced at least normally something that would have a shaded pole in it pole motor in it it is expected that this little this little motor won't be serviced and it won't be maintained and they don't even provide oil holes uh, brief interjection I was completely wrong about this knob now it is a lock knob but there is no cable that twists what happens is this is just this knob is just a nut, and it tightens down onto some threads there. And what that does is when you tighten down those threads, it pulls a little kind of a shaft, a flexible shaft, I suppose, on the inside of this here. And then what it does, it does not go through the transformer, as I had previously thought. Uh, and I, I amend that. What it does, see if I can show you. It uses the transformer as a solid mount. I don't know if you can see that. But what it does is when I, when I tighten this down, it shortens the length of this flexible piece here. And then um, it's, you know, just welded or uh, appears to be... Uh, looks like it might be brazed or welded. So it shortens the length of that. So this outer shielding uh, is like pushed down into this whole mechanism there. This entire outside piece. This is not a mount. This is actually the clamp that clamps down on these... Uh, ballasts here. So I, I, I don't know if you can see this or not. Let me try to get an angle here. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Let me tighten now. You see that going down. The spring there is getting compressed. And it's, yeah, it's shortening that and it's forcing that shielding to push down on that weird little clamp. And then when I let off the spring um, allows this clamp to lift up and return. And actually, if I back this off quite a bit, whoops, it's a little too much. So this appears to be plastic. So this piece of plastic is constant. This is the one that moves and it presses down and it clamps that ballast in between those two pieces of plastic. If you look up here, indeed, this is, this piece here pushes down on the plastic and that plastic is right there. That's plastic. This is metal, and that's what pushes down. Hopefully you found that useful. That's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. Yeah, man. There it is. That is super crazy dangerous. That right there is Balin the Mia, and we are going to do something really stupid today. Keeping your tail wide, your Balin might die. He's making me uncomfortable. Go, Balin! You are riding this? What the fuck is happening? Balin said not to talk crap about this camera. It's a piece of shit. This is so unbelievably sketchy. Why would you put me through this, you jerk? That's the power of really old engineering. It'd be nice if it didn't kill me. It's not required. I felt it fucking pop. Make a wish, everyone. Make a wish. Not okay. <laughs> you went too far. This guy, man, this guy.